just wanted some real spaghetti. Oh, he eat her car. He just wanted some real spaghetti. So I am going to make me some spaghetti squash. James is going to show you how to make it with regular spaghetti. Let's just get into this. It's the same way I make it. I'm just going to show y'all how to get it done because a lot of people don't know how to make it. So let me show y'all how to do it. We suggest sea salt, not just regular, um, you know, the 68 cent salt. It start with an I, and I forgot how to pronounce it. Yeah. But get you some sea salt. Well, fatty, I don't know how to say this. I'm going to have to look that up, how to, if I'm saying that right. Salt, sea salt. We like it better. Anyway, sea salt, black pepper, olive oil. That's my normal recipe for how I make the spaghetti squash. That's it, you take that, slide another for 45 minutes. All right, y'all, we're gonna make some meat on Cause we're gonna make that good spaghetti. Like my wife said, not your mama or your grandma's spaghetti, but we're gonna make some Jefferson spaghetti. So first thing we do, we go to Walmart, we got some ground beef chuck. Personally, I kind of take a uh, foundation of what everybody do, and then I turn it to mine. So today, we're using ground beef chuck. So I just want to get some of that good residue of meat off my hands. All right, so we got olive oil. We got Worcestershire sauce. I like sea salt. Well, we like sea salt because I really don't like a lot of salt in my food. You know, my wife get on me sometimes, like, dog, put some salt in the food. But I feel like when you put too much salt in the food, it take away the natural taste of the food. And then everything just tastes like salt rather than spices and seasonings and the actual meat all come together. I just go with it. That's what I do. And if the finished product come out too bland, then I know my spaghetti sauce is gonna cover up for the bland meatballs. But my goal is, is that the meatball gonna have its own taste, the spaghetti sauce gonna have its own taste, and they all gonna marry together and be together 10 years like me and my wife. So, okay, Yay. you got the Worcestershire sauce. You put, and me, I like to put my salt in first, then my pepper. You get that pepper in there, have it dancing around in the bowl. You kinda wanna cover all your bases because eventually I'm gonna get these hands in here and I'm gonna mix everything up. So it may look like a lot, but we gotta spread this around with all these meat that we put in here. So I'm 
soap. So next, I'm putting my garlic. So now I'm putting onion powder in there. And oregano in there. Now it's time to go wet. We got all our dry ingredients. Now we're gonna put our wet ingredients. And yeah, sometimes I go ahead and mix it up now so all your dry spices get all the way in there. But since I've done this so many times, I'm just kind of going with the flow and I'm gonna mix it up all together. So you get your olive oil in there. We have Parmesan cheese. So you take your crackers, cause you need some type of binder in your meatballs to keep them into a ball form. So our two binders are going to be eggs and crackers. These are buttery, flaky, uh, Toll House crackers. So I'm taking them and I'm crunching them up just like bread crumbs would look. And if you got some bread crumbs in your cabinet, you know, maybe that one time you made something and you used bread crumbs that one time and they just been sitting up in your cabinet, this is the perfect time to pull them out. But we ain't had no bread crumbs, so we got crackers. So we're gonna call them bread crackers. I'm not trying to teach you a recipe. I'm just trying to show you how spaghetti. So this is how I make it. And my whole goal is that I want you to take the foundation that you see I'm doing and make your own spaghetti. That's the whole goal is to make it your own. Make it. This is such and such a spaghetti. This is the Jefferson spaghetti. So now, I got my breadcrumbs in there. I got my spices in there. I got my wet ingredients in there. And now I'm going to put my eggs in there. Um, I only took out two eggs for right now just to see how far we go. I might need another one since I got so much meat. We will see when we get there. And I gotta give a shout out to my brother, Jonathan, cause he told me about this. He said when he was making meatloaf one time, he had put milk in his meatloaf and it just made it all more tender and juicier and more flavorful. So I was like, bet, I'ma take that up. So I'm putting a little bit of milk in here. So put some milk in here, we got everything in here. now time to use these. Don't be scared to use these. Get them in there, mix it up. This is where the love is at. Mm. The love is in here. The love is not in the spoon. Love is not in the spatula. Okay, so hands get in there. Take our, our meatballs, we're going to 
I'm sticking in the oven. Now, another thing I want to let y'all know, putting the meatballs in the oven, I'm just guesstimating maybe in like 20 minutes. Let it cook for 20 minutes. Don't go in there, check on it. The oven's already at 350. So cook them a little bit in the oven and then let the rest of the cooking of the meatballs be in the spaghetti sauce and the flavors that's in the meatballs is going to enhance the taste of your spaghetti sauce. And remember, we're making spaghetti sauce from scratch. This is not Ragu. This is not Prego. This is not Walmart brand. This is going to be some homemade spaghetti sauce. Italian and hot Italian sausage combo pack. Three sweet, two hot links in the pan, in the spaghetti. Ask your mama about it. Other veggie we're going to add is portobello mushrooms. So I got my spoon. I'm going to mix my tomato paste and my vegetables with the tomato paste. We got our peppers, we got our tomato paste. Once again, a little salt, a little pepper, and now we're going to add our garlic. save time and open all that garlic up we mix that up in there like so missed a couple of pieces but that's all right we'll just pull them out stick that right there stick that right there all right, we got that all blended up in there. Now, when you add garlic to your spaghetti, you need to make sure that you add sugar as well. You gotta put sugar in your spaghetti because the acid from the tomatoes, which I all know that we all have experienced when we're eating tomatoes, is that that acid is what it what gives you that heartburn or that indigestion every time that you eat pasta dishes. So you need that sugar 
to kind of balance out that that indigestion or that heartburn that you get when you be eating tomatoes. So, and then garlic makes it even worse. So now you got tomatoes and you got garlic, so you need something to balance that out. So to balance out tomatoes, the to, to balance out the acidity from the tomatoes, you add sugar and you also add salt because you wanna also pull away some of that acidity with the sugar and the salt. So, me, I kinda eyeball it. I'm not gonna put too much for the sake of my wife, but I still want the, the science of it to still work. So, a little bit of sugar, I already put salt in there, and now I'm gonna start adding my tomato. So, you really don't need to add any water because all your tomato sauce is gonna be pretty much liquefied enough and you're gonna have water from your petite uh, diced tomatoes. I should have got the bigger ones, but I chose to get petite this time. It doesn't matter. But you know why? Like we keep saying, it's your spaghetti. <laughs> taste kind of tomatoey and I don't want tomatoey I want to taste tomato but I don't want tomatoey sauce so that I do know that I'm going to need some more salt garlic is good I taste the garlic I'm gonna add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce which I do anyway I'm not doing that because it's lacking salt
not re-season them, but I do have my seasonings on the side just in case I need to. Because just like James said, we have to taste our food. So this is how you do it. It doesn't look like spaghetti yet, but it will. You just take the fork. See that? Wow. Spaghetti. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna. Thank you.